Why the Game of Thrones finale made perfect sense. Did you like the ending of Game of Thrones, or did it make you feel that they made you wait for over one year to air something horrible? For a show which gathered over 19 million views in the finale, people will be talking about it for some time. So, according to many critics, Arya went west, Drogon went east, Jon Snow went north, and the show went south. No guys, on the contrary, the show ended perfectly well. And if you stick around for the next couple of minutes, you'll understand why I'm saying so. If you ask me, it was a great comeback from the previous disastrous episode and the writers tied up many loose ends. There are massive spoilers in the video, so in case you haven't seen it yet, this will be the right time to look away. Let's have a look at some of the biggest questions and explain why whatever happened had to happen. First, where did Drogon take Danny? Jon betrayed his queen and stabbed Danny after realizing she wasn't fit to rule. All we know is that Drogon was seen flying east. The best assumption is that Drogon flew the lifeless body to Old Valyria, where the dragons and the Targaryens originally came from. Let's face it, guys, Jon had to stab her even though he loved Danny to bits. Did you see the monster she'd become? Danny disappointed many people when she turned into the Mad Queen and destroyed an entire city. But if Jon hadn't put an end to her, she'd ruin the whole world. I know it was difficult to watch her fight for justice throughout the season only for her to become the one thing she said she wouldn't become. I am not here to be Queen of the Ashes. That's what power does to people. It's sad but true. The only problem I have is why Jon had to confess. I mean, it was just the two of them, and Drogon is incapable of speech, so no one would ever know the truth. It's pretty apparent why Drogon didn't kill Jon, right? Jon is a Targaryen, and the dragon realized that they were connected in some way or they may be smarter than we think. Drogon went straight for the Iron Throne and destroyed it instead. The dragon was bright enough to understand that his mother was killed because of the quest to sit on the Iron Throne. Drogon was around for a long time, but fans had never seen him so emotional and vulnerable even when the other siblings died. The reaction when Drogon lost Danny was so real and super impressive. If Jon would have chosen to let his love for Daenerys cloud his judgment and let her rule with cruelty, fans would have still complained, and it's better to have her gone than have her rule like a tyrant. Clearly, the Mother of Dragons, Breaker of Chains, and Liberator of King's Landing had another definition of liberation. It's also a good thing that Danny and Jon didn't end up married as people expected. First of all, they are aunt and nephew, so it's just weird. We had enough from Jaime and Cersei. Plus, weddings never ended well in Westeros, so they avoided another disaster. Since Jon decided to confess, he had to face the consequences of killing the Queen. It was up to Bran and the Council to determine his fate. Killing him would have resulted in war, and setting him free would also cause havoc. The best compromise was sending him back to where he came from. Besides, the Night's Watch would be bearable with the Wildlings by his side. Also, did you see the green shoot outside Westeros? It means that winter would soon be over and the area would be much more habitable. Who would have missed the happy moment when Jon and Ghost reunited before he left Westeros? Ghost was missing an ear, but that moment was by far one of the best in the season finale. Grey Worm and the Unsullied wanted Jon Snow dead, and they left King's Landing to watch over another land as he'd agreed with Missande before her untimely demise. In an exciting twist, Jon Snow could still return to Winterfell after a few months. No one would know, and those who would know him would probably not mind him back. Jon Snow remains the prince who was promised. Evidently, Danny was the darkness which would destroy the world, and Jon sacrificed his love for her and killed her to save the world. Jon Snow was supposed to fulfill the legend of Azor Ahai, and Danny was his love, Nisa Nisa, whom he had to kill. If you think she would have let Jon live for too long, knowing he was a threat to the throne, you have to think again. Arya decided to go west, and like her, everyone else is wondering what lies west of Westeros. If you may recall, there were three islands discovered west by the friend of Rhianna Targaryen. But our best guess is that beyond the islands lies America. She's a wandering spirit like Columbus, and they most likely came across the same thing. I know you're also wondering what happened to the green-eyed person she was supposed to kill. Well, take it this way. She's going into an unknown world which probably has many green-eyed creatures or people, and she'll get to kill plenty of them. The adventurer already killed several notable people, and having Jon kill Danny instead of Arya made it more emotional. What about Bran? How in the world was Bran best fit to be king? Tyrion explained this aspect very well. Rulers don't have to be born, they can be made. The reason why Westeros was in so much chaos was that unworthy rulers took over the kingship simply because they were next in line. Bran can't sire children, so his children can't rule Westeros after his death. Plus, he may not have the experience, but the experienced council surrounding him would help him govern. 
Also, regardless of whether he was born to king or not, no one can match Bran's wisdom. Even the Night King knew that he had to get rid of Bran if his reign would last. Jon Snow's exile also justified the fact that kings wouldn't be born to rule over Westeros. As much as he's a Targaryen, any child he gets beyond the wall would be a wildling and incapable of claiming the throne. He's never wanted to be king anyway, and the greatest reward the writers could grant him was freeing him from Westeros. In the first season of Game of Thrones posters, Ned Stark sat on the Iron Throne with the Three-Eyed Raven beside him. He didn't make it to the finale, but the show had to make sure his children were well cared for. We've accounted for Bran and Arya, but there's also Sansa. In case you didn't realize, she's Queen of the North, and the North is independent of the other six kingdoms. It puts to rest criticism about the finale being sexist. Okay, from the finale, we're also missing the Masters of War, Laws, and Whisperers. Considering very critical people died in the war, there were very few people to choose from, but the candidates at the round table are the best Westeros could ask for. Sam's suggestion to vote in leaders was brushed off, but at least the new council would appoint the next leader. Well, it's not really that democratic, but it's much better than the tyranny in season one. In a couple of years, they'd probably embrace elections. Tyrion was, however, given a very befitting ending. Yes, he made a lot of mistakes, but he always learned from them, although very slowly. As the Hand of the King, he'd have a lot of responsibilities and opportunity to correct his mistakes. Oh, and the scene where he had to dig his siblings from the rubble was epic. Fans of Game of Thrones are very entitled, and they may justify the petition to have the last season rewritten considering they invested a lot of emotion in the show. At the end of the day, the show was a sci-fi fantasy, and the writers were under pressure to fulfill the desires of the fans and still maintain the cultural dynamic of the show. Whichever way it would have ended, views would again be divided. Shows have timelines, and it was time to bring the Game of Thrones to an end. Given the many stories left untold, it should have taken at least three more seasons to wrap the show, but considering they had one season left, the crew did a pretty decent job. If you're still wondering whether they made the right choices, we'll have to check back in 10 years to find out as Tyrion said. Most likely, we'll have sequels or prequels which will tie up any other loose ends. For now, it's adios, but you'll be seeing us again very soon.